Hi, this is Michael Buffer, and let's get ready for Baylor TV. Hey, I'm just leaving the Sheffield Boxing Centre, and I have with me driving the car, Tommy Franks. Doing? Tommy, how are you doing? I'm good mate, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So, I've <coughs> just been in the gym. Yeah. And I've interviewed uh, Sam Sheedy, spoken to Matt Mowat, that's it? Yep, yeah, Matt Mowat. And... PEM. Yeah, PEM, of course. Yeah. And, uh, and Glyn Rhodes. Glyn Rhodes. Yeah, but... The main man. Where was the guy that disappeared and ran off? Uh, Keenan Wayne, he had to go. He's one of, one of amateurs. Good lad. Yeah, and he's, meant to be, he's meant to be very talented. Yeah, he is very, very talented. He's an handful. A handful? He is. The wolf? The wolf, we call him. Okay. Um, I think he's um, he's going to be turning pro pretty soon, I think. Okay. I think maybe he's going to have one more season amateur and then, um, and then turn pro. Okay. So, you lived in Sheffield all your life? I do, yeah. I okay, have. so if you don't mind me asking, how old are you now? I'm 23. You're 23. Yeah. So when did you first start boxing? I first started. I first started boxing when I was um, when I was 12, yeah. um, and I went to Sheffield Boxing Centre. Um, but I didn't really I didn't really take to it at first. Um, I, just, I just sort of used to go and train and for a bit of fitness and that. And I weren't that good when I started, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but when I got to about 14, that's when I that's when I really took to it. I started taking it seriously, and then I'm my first amateur fight at, at 15. And then okay. from then on, it's just been my life, basically. Okay. And uh, who was in, who inspired you at the time when you first started boxing? Uh, lo loads of boxers, you know, obviously being from Sheffield. Um, I looked up to fighters like Clinton Woods, you know, a big fan of his, and, uh, and Prince to see my head as well. Um, but I, I love Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard were like my, my all-time favourite. Okay. And then the original... Uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, Ray Robinson I, you know, he is my all time favourite. Mine too. Um, so, yeah, just, just fighters like that. But I was, I, I became and I still am a fan of boxing. Right. You know, so, I, I love following uh, loads of boxers' careers. Um, so, yeah. Okay, we could do the typical normal interview, but yeah. you know, that's a Baylor TV. We like to do things yeah, a little different. Definitely. So what's it like in the typical day of Tommy Franks? I like the car, by the way. It's all right. Chicks dig the bad. car, right? Yeah. It probably, it's probably looked better from the outside. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I'm, well, to be honest, I train full time. Yep. So in, in order for me to be able to do that, yeah. I have to rely on a lot of sponsors. Okay. Which I've, I've fortunately I have got, and a lot of people help me out, and I've got this sponsored car. And um, so, why do you think that is, Tommy? I don't know. I like because to think maybe I'm a because I'm a nice guy. I don't know. I don't know. Um, got a cheeky smile. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Because um, there are a lot of people that want sponsorship and they don't yeah. seem to get it. And um, some Definitely. people can't fight, yeah. which is clear they can't fight. So is it? Do you think it's because you can you, you can deliver the goods? Is it because you've delivered the goods? Yeah, what definitely. Is it? Yeah, def obviously. I'd, I'd like to think it's a bit of a mixture of both. That I'm I'm a decent fighter and as well I'm I'm a, I'm a nice kid. You know, I'm I'm just trying to to work hard and I'm trying to live my dream basically yeah. and get get to where I, I want to be. So, um, where, so where does Tommy Franks want to be? I want to be a world champion eventually. I think I think a lot a lot of fighters are going to say that. Yes. Yeah. But sometimes maybe they don't they don't really believe that because it's not um, realistic to them, you know. Okay. But to me I, I just think why not? I think why not? I look at fighters like uh, like Clinton Woods again. And I'm sure he never thought he was going to be a world champion. Right. You know what I mean? But he just stuck at it, stuck at it, kept working hard, and with a little bit of luck, uh, eventually you get there. But I, I just want to, I want to enjoy the journey and do the best that I can. And um, and I, I believe in myself, and that's why I say I'm going to be a world champion so one day. What does it take to be the best? I think it takes a lot of things. It takes discipline. You know, you've got to work hard, and you got you got to give up a lot as well. But like I've I've had to give up a lot, like growing up, because I've always been boxing. Yeah. Um, you know, I've I've had to give up a lot of things, like going out and lads holidays and things like that. And it's it's the little things like that you have to give up in order to be successful. It's only it's only now really that I'm yeah. sort of seeing the benefits of that. You know, I'm I'm doing well. I'm I'm undefeated. I'm professional, 
and you know I'm getting the things like the sponsored cars and the yeah. help. So it's only really now that the last ten years of hard work and just staying with it is sort of paying off. Let's talk about females, women. I remember when yeah. I used to box, pain in the ass they were. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> getting away. Oh, I don't want you boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want you getting hurt. Why yeah. do you have to always be down in the gym? Why can't you get at me and the girls tonight? So talk to me about your experiences of that situation. For you, for you. I'm, I'm a one woman man. Yep. I've been with my girlfriend for four years. Okay. And her name's Charlie. Yep. And she's a really big important part of my boxing. Right. You know what I mean? She, she's the worker. She she pays the bill, so to speak. You know what I mean? And and she makes it easy for me to be able to to do what I do. Yeah. And, to, and you know, I'm I'm trying to do something for the both of us. Yeah. Um, so obviously she's been a big support for me. Um, don't know what I do without her. So yeah, I mean, um, when it comes to like training full time, yeah. um, she's a, a really big help. So why do you think? I mean, for some men, they get that and they'll ruin it. Yeah, exactly. Why? I just maybe maybe they think that the grass is greener. Do you know what I mean? Is but the grass greener? Definitely not. No, I think especially when you start being successful, you're gonna get attention off certain women. You know that. Yeah that kind of only want one thing, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, people out there that have sort of thrown away what they've got with yeah. someone for that sort of thing. Okay. You know, maybe boxers in, in particular, because they're in the, in the uh, spotlight. Yeah. Um, but I just, I, I definitely don't think the grass is green. Now, I know what I've, what I've got with yeah. my girlfriend. And, so you've got the nice you know, car, you're driving the yeah. road, you've got your name on it. The old girls pop and say, "All right, Tommy, no, how are you doing?" No, not really. To no, be honest, no. I, th I think it looks, it looks more more glamorous than what it is really. I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, earn, earn my way, so to speak. I'm just working hard and, and like dedicating myself to my craft, and hopefully that's going to get me and my family and my girlfriend to where I want to be one day. So if I were, I'm a complete alien, know nothing about you. Yeah. What sort of a fighter are you? Um, I'd say I'm, I'm probably not like a one punch knockout artist, you know, okay. I'm quite I'm quite tricky, you know, I like to think I'm, I'm, I'm a, a decent boxer, but it's obviously I can I can stand and have a fight and, and dig in if I have to, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd probably say I'm more like a thinking, thinking sort of fighter. Mm -hmm. So, let's talk about the day of a fight for you, how does it work for you into mental, mentally as a day before or the day of a fight? The day of the fight is yeah. literally all mental because um, because all, all the work has been done, all, all the months and months training has been done. So on that day, uh, you're literally just um, just mentally preparing yourself for what what's does, to come. What does that mean for you, Tommy? Um, I like I, I do a lot of visualising. You know, I like to visualise what I'm going to do that night. Yeah. And I, I run through the fight in my head. You know, different scenarios. Um, and just being positive I'm a big big believer not just in boxing but in everyday life yeah. and in, in positive thinking and, and I think you know you draw things to you when you are positive so I just try and be try and be positive basically. so fights that have inspired you give me three fights yeah. that inspire you think about if I say three fights mate I'm coming around to your house tonight mate yeah crack on three fights for me to watch what are the three fights going back to Sugar Ray Robinson yep um, I know I think he fought Jake Lamotta five times. Yep. Um, but definitely one of them would be in them three. Okay. You know, I just I just loved the way that they used to fight back then. Yep. They didn't care. Do you know yep. what I mean? They, they did not care who they fought. The best fought the best. There were no politics or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that would definitely be one. My next one, I can always remember in 2007 when um, when and fought Mayweather. Oh. And I can't. I can't remember how old I must have been. I'm uh, f maybe 14, 15 or something. Yeah. Or maybe 16. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd not been boxing too long. And um, I can remember, you know, getting up at 4 in the morning and watching that and, and just thinking, you know, just, just imagine, you know, one day uh, boxing in, in Vegas, you know, uh, at the MGM and things like that. So um, I can always remember that, that fight for some reason. Obviously, like, I was gutted because I, I had lost. Um, but I can always remember getting up for that fight. And obviously, I'm gonna to have to mention the Gatti Ward. You know what I mean? Trilogy. Yeah, yeah, the Gatti Ward, but the 
was it the first fight? Yes. The, the round nine of the first fight. Oh. Got to be the, the best round in, in boxing history. I don't, I don't know. Don't, don't quote me on that. But in, in my opinion. What about Hagler Hearns? You're gonna put that up there? To be, yeah. yeah first round. But to be honest, I, I'll be honest with you now. Yeah. I hadn't really watched that much of like fighters like Marvin Hagler. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe, Got to see that first round and Bo yeah, Holyfield. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I don't know for some reason. I'm, I'm just being honest. Yeah, yeah. You like that really, Gatty Ward? Yeah, you like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Okay. So, what would you say is your favourite punch to throw? Favourite punch. Um, your honey punch when you land, you go yeah, lovely. Take that. I love a good left hook to body. Okay. Maybe you know a, a tap upstairs with jab and then bang that left hook to body. Okay. Um, Mickey Ward's favourite shot, you know, tap him to the head, bang him to the body. You know, Glenn always tells us to do that, so it'd probably be that. Like I said, I maybe I am you know perfected it just yet because I'm not I'm not knocking people out just yet. But yeah. Maybe one day I, I can perfect that punch and, and make it you know count for me. Okay, uh, you you are a man on social media. You're yeah. on Twitter. Yes. So let's let's get your twi Twitter name out there. At Super Tommy Frank. Okay. So um, while you're on Twitter, I'm sure you have known you know about keyboard warriors and trolls, right? Yeah. Have yeah. you ever, have you encountered them in your brief professional career? Not really. No. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've I've been a bit overwhelmed with the amount of support and, and you know positivity I've had right. from people. So touch wood. No, I haven't yet. But I'm sure them them things come with time, and I think it's just. There's just them people out there, and you're never going to be able to do anything about that, you know what I mean? What's the most ridiculous comment you've read over Twitter? Or one is you've said, oh my god, I can't believe this. I can't, um, I can't really think of an exact one, but you just, I think, I think because there's that many. Yeah. I just think on, no matter if it's boxing or, or anything really. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in every aspect of life, there's always going to be, you know, stupid comments flying about. And, yeah. And what I don't like is people getting too personal and, and really meaning the things they're saying. Do you yeah. Because I mean? it, it goes from being a bit of banter and, and, and a bit of a laugh to yeah. people, you know, being hurt. On so, the subject of that, distastefulness and class. Yeah. yeah. But hey, Bellew. David Hay saying yeah. he wants to put yeah, yeah. Bellew in hospital it's, and put uh, him on stretcher and stuff. I hate that. I mean, yeah. at what point do we draw a line? Should there be a line that's drawn? Is there a line in boxing? And is there a line you don't cross over? Definitely. Where's the lines? Definitely, I think so. I, I look at boxing as a gentleman's sport. You know, you shake your opponent's hand, you have a you have a fight with him, the yeah. best man wins, and then after you hug each other, and you know, and, and that's that's how it should be for me. Okay. Um, I think there is. It is a line what you've got to consider where it's all right having a bit of tongue in cheek, yeah. you know, with your opponent before the fight. Maybe it helps to sell the fight a bit more. Yeah. But I just think if you're two um, top class boxers um, at world level, yeah. the fight's going to sell itself. So you don't, you know, you don't have to cross over that line from a bit of tongue in cheek, a bit of banter, and then getting a bit personal and it gets nasty. And so what happens if you get an opponent in your future career getting up in your face and disrespecting you and your missus and all that yeah. sort of stuff because you're going to get it, it happens. eventually yeah. someone yeah, is going to do it I, I don't know I, I really don't know okay, as an I, amateur I just, as an amateur do you ever ever have a grudge match was there ever a guy that you really wanted chin in it in the amateurs sort, sort of sort of but I, I don't I've never really had no to be honest I've never really had that there was no guy in the amateurs that you wanted to chin. You're that nice a guy, Tommy. You didn't want to chin anybody in the amateurs. There were one guy like, I'm going to get you. I've got, got to chin you. There's one no, I nobody. That, yeah, when I, when I first started boxing, I'm not going to say his name. Yeah, okay, you don't. I'm not going to say his name. But when I, like, one of my first few fights, I boxed the kid three times and I beat him three times. Right. This was when I was, like, 15. Okay. You know, and, um... And he, he started and he, he was sending me Facebook messages and like you know, you you know you never won that fight. He was from Manchester, this guy. Uh oh. Um, that's one that I can remember. But it, it was it was somewhat or nothing. You know what I mean? If I saw, if I met him today, would probably I'd, I'd shake his hand. You know what I mean? He'd probably come and say to you, "You yeah. stopped winning that fight." Yeah. And if he knew yeah. your Twitter handle, they'd probably tell you that, mate. You didn't win that yeah, fight. That's it. Yeah. But um, but yeah, this this tastefulness in boxing, I don't. I don't like it. I don't think there's any place for, for disrespecting your opponent like that. 
Let's talk about how your, your promoter, Dennis Hobson, correct? Dennis Hobson and AJ Hobson. Okay, of course. Yeah, yeah. So talk to me about those two. Talk to me about how you yeah. how you collaborated with them. You know, obviously, I just I recently turned pro in July. Yep. Um, and obviously, I knew of Dennis, obviously, and I knew of AJ through Sam. Yep. Because uh, they've been promoting Sam, so it was just sort of... Uh, Match made in heaven, really. Was it just a natural I mean, progress of you, or yeah. was it, or was it just a case of, well, Sam's doing, it, I'll do it, or you I just look? I did you shop like, around, or was it just no, a? No, no, not at all, because I, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had to. Right. Because every, you know, everything I wanted in, what I want for my boxing is with Dennis and AJ Hobson. You know what I mean? So okay. Um, so obviously, I saw how well Sam were doing, and obviously, I'd met Dennis and AJ before, so it was just sort of a, a no-brainer, really. Yeah. And, and things were from there. What about whispering the air and whispering you and say to you, come mate, you don't have to go Wobson, and come with us? No, not yet, but I'm sure if that ever happened, I'm, I'm not like that. You know, I, I see, that's another thing that I don't, I don't like disloyalty. Yeah. Um, I, you know, Glenn would, I was talking to Glenn about it earlier, but, you know, if fighters lose a fight, they want to blame everyone else but themselves. You know, they want to blame the trainer and they, and they move trainers. But it's not about that, do you know what I mean? I think that if you've got something that works um, and something that's, that's good for you and you've been successful, you should stick at it no matter what. Um, and that's why I'm really pleased that I've been I've been with Glenn since uh, since I was 12. Since I, I feel you know I've never never walked into another gym. So you but so you believe in him to the point where? Oh yeah, listen, I, I trust Glenn Rose with, with my life, and I think that if you're a boxer, that's the relationship you sh you should have with your trainer. You so know? what about all these tra these fighters that change gyms because hey, you know what? Well, I lost a fight, so yeah. oh, it's time for you to go. Well, that's what I mean. It, it don't always. Sometimes it works. Sometimes. Maybe there is a problem and you can't sort out that problem unless you get another trainer. Yeah, maybe I can understand, but for the most part, it's um, it's just it's, it's disloyal. Do you know what I mean? Okay. They, instead of looking at themselves yeah. and thinking, right, what 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 have I done wrong and what can I do right? They just, they're trying to it's, it's the blame game. Do you know what I mean? Of course. Okay, let's talk outside of boxing. Let's talk about Tommy Franks. What sort of music do you listen to, Tommy? Do you know what? I'm I'm a Motown man. You're a Motown man. Yeah. Go on with that. Go on with that. <laughs> I love. I, I got brought up on Motown. You know, my mum and dad always used to play Motown. Anyone in particular? Yeah, uh, everyone. Aretha Franklin, yeah, Marvin Gaye, yeah, all, all of them. Oh, you're 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 a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> Go on with them moves. <laughs> I'm gonna come back to mine and listen to some Motown, baby. <laughs> So, when you're training in the gym, do you put Motown on or...? Sometimes, yeah. Really? We've got a Four Tops CD in a minute. Wow! We've got a bit of Four Tops going on. You're a, you're a bit... You're a bit of... Uh, old head on... What do you think? Young shoulders, absolutely! No, you know what? Not a lot of... Not come a lot no of Dizzy Rascal, no! No, no, do you know what? I don't just listen to Motown. I like all music. Alright, okay. I listen... <clears throat> excuse me, I listen to, you know, a wide range of music. Yep. Um, but obviously, I just, I just I mentioned Motown because um, I, I do like Motown. Wow. Any, what's your favourite tune? My f what? Uh, okay, there's a, a, every every year there's always a tune that you have. Even if it's an old tune, you go, this is my tune for the wow. summer or this is my tune for the you winter. You know what? I'm telling you this. Stevie Wonder Superstition. Ah. Uh, I, I love that song. Um, that That's one of my favourites, that. Definitely. Okay. Toby, you have a quick word to people who are listening to this and yeah, watching you? just um, thank you for all your support. You know, it really, really means a lot to me. Um, I know, you know, I'm, my next fight is 24th of March at Ponds Forge uh, on the undercard of Sam Sheedy's Commonwealth title fight. So how do they get tickets? Through me. Yep, um, so how do they contact you? Yep, yeah, uh, contact me on Twitter, I'm, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, just give me a message. So how, what are you on Facebook? Uh, just Tommy Frank on Facebook. Tommy Frank, is yeah, there a picture of you? Just is there a picture of you or? Yeah, my profile picture is me of when I'm when I'm fighting. Okay. So, um, but I'm, I'm sure there's only there's not many of Tommy Franks out there. I'm sure. Tommy Frank, not Tommy Franks, right? Yeah, no S, just just the Frank, no S. Okay, and on Twitter? Yeah, uh, Twitter at Super Tommy Frank. Okay, Tommy, thank you so much for talking to Baylor at Worldwide Television. Thank you. And. Uh, Thank you for taking on this nice drive around Sheffield. Yeah, no problem. Finally, we'll get back to where I've got to get to yeah, safely. Definitely. No worries.